on Explorer Journal, an adventurous couple pedals their way to the soul of a nation. From Beijing to Hong Kong on bicycle. We want to see the China tourists don't get to see. No guides and no translators. <laughs> China before it changes completely. So we set out to cross China to bike the dragon. I'm Peter Crosby, a photojournalist who covers Asia. Atsuko Horiguchi is a World Bank economist who's never done anything like this. Our crazy ambition is to ride from Beijing, the capital, through the rural belly of China, on south to Hong Kong. That's over 2,000 miles in six months. People think we're nuts. But as today's Chinese say, "Kai, why not? Try it, even if you don't know what's going to happen." At the start of our journey, troops of the People's Liberation Army were marching through Tiananmen Square as if there was a great parade for us. It felt very grand. Soon enough, we were stuck in reality. We rode or pushed big, heavy Chinese bikes called flying pigeons. After a while, we called them the flying pigs. Hey. To most folks, China is a vast enigma. It's bigger than the U.S. and has a fifth of the world's people. I've observed Asia for years, but China is still the great mystery. The emerging power, the unknown, we have to explore. Our first major challenge is to climb Wu Tai Shan, one of the four sacred Buddhist mountains of China. Yay! We've only been on our journey for a month. And we're trying to tackle a 10,000-foot climb. I've done triathlons, and this is as tough as any of them. For Otsko, once a weekend biker, this seems like Mount Olympus itself. We actually saw an Olympic athlete training on a lightweight bike. I had a serious case of bike envy. <laughs> Later, when a group of Mongolian pilgrims invited us for tea, we gladly accepted. They'd come over a thousand miles for their pilgrimage to the holy mountain. <laughs> Revived by their kindness, we take on the last steep ascent. I'm so happy! I'm so happy! Why? Of a mountain, we've been climbing for eight and a half hours. Well, when one of those goes by, see that? We rode our bikes here. We rode bicycles here, and you rode a bus. We stayed one night at the Gold Temple. One of the many monasteries in the mountains. As different as our worlds are, we felt very connected to the monks. We didn't want to leave, but we knew there were lots of adventures down the road. For weeks, we were in remote China. We became the tourist attraction wherever we went. Many people had never seen foreigners, certainly not ones with bikes. People said to us, "You know, why are you doing this? Don't you have any money? Why wouldn't you take a car, a bus, or fly?" <laughs> they think we must be poor if we travel by bike, but it's the bikes that make our experiences rich. Bye bye. <laughs> One day, 
we hear some music in the distance and decide to follow it. A stranger hands us some lotus leaves to shade our heads. We're beckoned to cross some fields. We don't know what's going on. They're wailing and praying and burning incense and spirit money. The father had died, and the whole village is honoring his passing in a three-day ceremony. For a short period, we're part of that village. We're no longer strangers. The further we journeyed into China, the more we shed our own ways and our equipment, like our water filter. So every day we searched for clean, boiled water to fill our bottles. Some days it was scalding. Atsuko's really shaken, but she applies what first aid she can. It's scary getting an injury in the middle of nowhere. We finally find this treatment room in a public hospital in Nanyang, a large city. It's painful. A third degree burn. I want better care, so we try a private hospital where they use specialized treatments. Or is there a rat? Or turns all over the spin. <laughs> After five days of that medical care, I was dying to get back on the road. Bronchitis, the trot, saddle sores, bruises, and flat tires hadn't stopped us. This burn wasn't going to stop us either. Ahead lay the greatest mystery of our trip, the ancient forest of Shinonja. Legendary home of China's Bigfoot. For the next month, I became obsessed with finding Bigfoot. The police seemed to have other ideas. They kept kicking us out. We learned that this region was surrounded by military. I was worried we'd get deported from the country. Once, they put us on a bus to send us far away. But luckily, the bus broke down. So we got our stuff off and headed back to our search for Bigfoot. This time, we decided to get even further off the main roads and sneak our way in. On our old maps, I discovered a reservoir that just might lead to the forest. Around the bend, we were hoping to find the path to Bigfoot. Instead, we found ourselves completely lost. Our bikes were breaking, and so were our spirits. It just hits a break every time. Are you suggesting we turn back? I'm suggesting we turn back. The search for Bigfoot was a big disappointment. Three months on the road, we were getting burned out. But we didn't give up. Instead, we redesigned our trip. It's the same here. Well, it's the same road that goes down here. We're headed west on the Yangtze, the longest river in Asia. The huge dam they're building will flood the Three Gorges and swallow over 1,300 villages. We wanted to get out and meet the people whose lives will change. One afternoon, we got caught in the cold rain. We were lost again. Some people who lived in a dirt house invited us in. Come. Have a hot potato. They brought us into their lives with a warm fire and hot tea. 
Then, with remarkable generosity, the Liu family prepared us a special feast. Have you ever felt like the more we're different, the more we're the same? With the Liu's, we learn how close we really are. The father and I even share the same birthday. When we said goodbye, we cried. I wondered if we came back in ten years, how different their lives would be. After the Liu family in rural China, the cities of the south are a culture shock for me. Everything is on the move. This is brave new China, a giant construction zone, the commercial tail that wags the dragon. The rhythms intensified. The roads became more dangerous. Just 20 feet from us, we saw a horrible accident. A woman was thrown into the air and killed. Couldn't get anybody to, to help. These people have been hit by a truck or a motorcycle. It made me feel very, very vulnerable. It could have been Otsko. It could have been me. We had survived so many dangers in the last six months. We'd also pedaled into the adventure of a lifetime. It was a privilege to see uncharted China and to document people and places before they change. The whole trip was only an idea that came from nowhere and could have gone nowhere. But instead, I put it into action and made the journey real. 2,400 miles. We did it. We biked the dragon. Kai!